In 2008, 90,000 people were killed by an earthquake in China. In 1985, 23,000 people were killed by a volcanic eruption in Colombia. And every year, 15 to 20,000 people are killed by landmines worldwide. I want to try and reduce the number of these deaths, and I think I've just made something that can do it. It's an extremely accurate gravity sensor, and it is so small that it could fit inside of a golf ball. A bit of background theory. Anything with mass feels a gravitational force and therefore an acceleration towards anything else with mass, where we call this acceleration gravity. And its size depends on the mass of the two objects and their distance apart. That's it. If you're able to make really accurate measurements of gravity, then you start to be able to see the influence of smaller and smaller things until eventually you can build up an image of the world around you and below you so that you can see things like magma flowing in volcanic reservoirs. You can see hidden tectonic faults that cause earthquakes, and you can see landmines underground. So how sensitive do you need to make these things? Well, I'd like you to quickly take a peek at your neighbor. Can you feel the attraction? <laughs> no. Because the gravitational pull that each of you are feeling towards the Earth is two billion times smaller than that you're feeling towards your neighbor. But that is how sensitive I need to make this sensor. So how do you do it? Use a spring. If you put a ball on the end of a spring, then it will be attracted towards anything else with mass. In order to make this movement as big as possible so that you can see it easily, you want a really heavy ball and a really soft spring, much like this. <laughs> the problem with this is that it's, it's soft, but it's not strong, the spring. So that's why we've designed something that's really thin in one dimension and thick in the other. You might not think of it as a spring, but it's much like a saw blade. It's soft and it's strong. But here's the thing, it's not just a design anymore. After 18 months of careful design, planning, and testing, about two months ago, I made it. As I edged this thing towards the end of its construction pad, I knew I'd made something special, because as I pushed it into the air, the heavier the mass and the softer the spring, the slower this will move, and it was moving really slowly. <laughs> it was twice as slow as anything ever been built before, and at that moment, I got shivers down the back. I'm getting them now because I was holding something in my hand that could predict earthquakes, that could, could predict volcanic eruptions, that could find landmines, in other words, that could save thousands of lives. And you know what the one annoying thing was? I forgot to say Eureka. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Well, a very impressive array of props and, of course, a brave choice of subject. He's clearly no spring chicken. Uh, judges, what did you make of it? Look at Isaac Asimov. I think, Asimov <laughs> one of my favourite quotes in science is, great moments in science are rarely met with the word eureka, but usually with the words, hmm, that's funny. And I think, but, but they were a lot shorter than that. That's the, when I was breaking them off. <laughs> the most exciting thing for me was listening to you just talking about that moment. It's rare you get to share that. That sort of, that, that little moment of discovery, and it, it, it really is shivers up your back. And, and it, I actually felt that, so you actually delivered there. But please, when you start a talk, save lives. Don't start with doom and gloom. I, I felt terrible in the first few seconds. No, it, 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 I, I really <laughs> wanted, it was great. You, you topped it off brilliantly when you got to the, oh, we can save lives with this. And you really feel this passion. But... But my only advice is don't start by giving us statistics on dead people. It just really <laughs> makes me feel awful. But it was... Sorry. I, I, I love... <laughs> like I, a hug. I mean, but <laughs> that moment of discovery that you had there was priceless. And thank you for sharing it. Very welcome. See, oh. I'll disagree. Because I think you, you get the drama with the doom and gloom. <laughs> no. you, you, you sit there and think, oh, my God, yeah, it's all awful. It? But there's a ray of hope, and it's in here. So it sort of goes out... I think it's that change of emotion that I like. You know, the gloom and doom and then the elation. But I used to work in landmine detection. Okay. <laughs> and, and one of the things... Luck out. Oh, no. <laughs> you weren't expecting that. <laughs> there we go. So, um, but one of the things we find is a very high force alarm rate. So right. you can detect something that's under there, uh, but you don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. It could be... Um, so for instance, with metal detectors, you yeah. can sweep over the ground, you find something metal, it could be a landmine, it could be a coke can. Mm -hmm. Can you... Is there any way that your um, design could differentiate... I suppose the more accurate the get you get it, the more kind of, uh, um, I suppose, what's the word, spatial res resolution you could get, so that you, uh, you can, if you see something that's perfectly 
uh, circular on the ground, then you would know, know that. So the better we get it, the more likely we are to be able to distinguish uh, that from just a rock. I mean, the way that you see, I mean, if, I mean now they're making them out of plastic and things, so yes. if, it was, if it was in more dense soil and you've had the plastic, uh, then you would see it as a difference of density. If it's metal and it's in soil that's less dense, then you would see it as a difference in density. So the better we can get it, the more we can resolve. So I suppose that would be the thing. At first, you might get false alarms if, if it's not quite good enough, because it might just be a, a blur. But the, the better we get it, the better we get it, then the clearer it'll, it will so, become. So, so more resolution, uh, better calibration. Yeah, with, with this sort of thing as well, you can do very... Because they're small uh, and really inexpensive, you can, you, can put them, you can spread them out a lot, and you can move them, move them in, in vehicles. Yes. So if you can do very big surveys, then you start being able to uh, you know, s sort of spot these things quickly, so you're not having to go along at a snail's pace. Um, so that, that would be the aim, is the, the inexpense of it and the, and the size of it. it means that you can, you can make thousands of them. Um. Excellent. Make some noise for the last of our boys, Richard Middlemiss. Yeah.